A very good morning and warm greetings to everyone present here. I, Rebecca Sandra, Assistant Professor, Department of IEC, will be hosting towards today's event. On behalf of the Department of IEC, East Point College of Engineering and Technology, I take great pleasure in welcoming today's dignitaries for the two-day national conference on engineering innovation in emerging technologies, NCEIEG 2021. With the blessings and inspiration of our chairman, late Dr. S. M. Venkatapati, I extend my warm welcome to Srimati B. L. Ramadevi Ma'am, the chairperson of EPGI in her absentia. I also extend my warm welcome to our two dynamic CEOs, Mr. Pramod Gowda Sir and Mr. Rajiv Gowda Sir in their absentia. I take great pleasure and honor in welcoming our beloved principal sir, Dr. T.K. Satish Sir, for today's inaugural ceremony. We welcome you, sir. I take great honor in welcoming the keynote speakers, Dr. Dinesh K. Anvekar, Dr. Dinesh H. H. Dr. C. B. Aki, and Dr. Nicholas for our two-day national conference. We welcome you, sir. I also take great honor in welcoming the captain of our ship, our beloved HOD, sir, Professor Kemparaju, sir, who has always been a constant model of support. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. I also my warm welcome to all the other department HODs of EPCET and my dear faculty members. We welcome you all. I take great pleasure in welcoming all the participants from various colleges and various places in India who have authored papers in various domains. We heartily welcome you all for today's inaugural function of our conference. Thank you. So I would like to give a few words about the conference that is going to happen for the two days. Technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational, said by George Kuros. The National Conference on Engineering Innovations in Emerging Technologies provides a common forum for deliberation, sharing of recent trends, and increment research in the field of information science and computer science and engineering. This conference will be a very good platform for academicians, researchers, industry practitioners and technologists to discuss and present the recent advances and research outcomes in the field of information science and computer engineering. It is a mark of a tradition to invoke the almighty at the beginning of a very important occasion. I now request Ms. Neeraja of HSM IAC to do the invocation song. ಒಂದೇ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ದೇವ ಒಂದೇ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಒಂದೇ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಆ ದೇವ ಒಂದೇ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಬಂದ ವಿಘ್ನಗಳ ಕಳೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ದೇವ ಬಂದ ವಿಘ್ನಗಳ ಕಳೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಬಂದ ವಿಘ್ನ ಕಳೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಆ ದೇವ ಬಂದಿ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಆದೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಿನ್ನ ಪಾದ ಪೂಜಿಸಿದ ಧರ್ಮರಾಯ ಸಾಧಿಸಿದ ರಾಜ್ಯವ ಗಣನಾಥ ದೇವ ಸಾಧಿಸಿದ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಗಣನಾಥ ಆ ದೇವ ಒಂದಿ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಮಂಗಳ ಮುರುತಿ ಗುರು ರಂಗ ವಿಠಲನ ಪಾದ ಮಂಗಳ ಮುರುತಿ ಗುರು ರಂಗ ವಿಠಲನ ಪಾದ ಹಿಂಗ ದೇವ ಜಿಪೆ ದೇವ ಗಣನಾಥ ದೇವ ಹಿಂಗ ದೇವ ಜಿಪೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಆ ದೇವ ಒಂದಿ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಮೊದಲೊಂದಿ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಆ ದೇವ ಒಂದಿ ಪೆನಿನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು
ನಂದು ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ನೀರಜ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಟು ಇನ್ವೋಕ್ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ ನೌ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ ವಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಷನ್ now let's uh, walk into the qu- next session let's have a quick virtual tour of our college east point education and helping students to develop pre so let's have a quick tour of the college with the head announcer we welcome you to the beautiful campus of east point We at East Point Group of Institutions offer limitless opportunities imparting quality technical education and helping students to develop precocious aptitude and equip necessary skills for a successful professional career. Our training and placement cell guide and encourage students through every step until placed in reputed companies. East Point Group of Institutions Building Skills from the Last 3 Decades Thank you for the wonderful video. We will now have a traditional auspicious light lamp ceremony, lighting of the lamp ceremony as a mark of a tribute to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge. We now request our beloved HOD sir to do the honors. <clears throat> Thank you HOD sir. Thank you dear principal sir. It's not audible madam. Thank you principal sir. Thank you HOD sir and thank you all faculty members. I now request our beloved H- principal sir Dr. T. K. Satish, the principal of East Point College of Engineering and Technology, to share a few words of his views. We welcome you, sir. Thank you very much, and uh, very warm morning to everybody, and a warm welcome to this conference. And uh, on the outset, let me congratulate uh, the dynamic HOD, uh, Professor Kempraj, sir. I think you know it is a wonderful particular occasion for the students and the staff. to understand that what are all the major innovations that are happening it out in the field and what all the possibilities that essentially one can contribute to if you look at the you know i mean the field is quite open in the sense that you know we are speaking of emerging innovations uh, emerge you know i mean uh, in the emerging technology particular this so if you look at you know the engineering technologies that essentially have been quite popular in the last couple of years maybe cyber security iot you know i mean a blockchain and the fusion between the 5g and the machine learning and the deep learning particular this that essentially gives a lot of opportunities for people to be innovative as such so these are all the various places in fact you know i mean if you look at the last 30 40 years particular this and now today particular this i think in the last 10 years you know the in particular the contributions from the researchers have been immense in that particular this 
people can really write lot of code based upon the various libraries that is available in the uh, way i know whether it may be python whether it may be in any other particular this so th this is the right time for anybody to be innovative as such so you need to be able to look at what essentially innovation means i do not want to go deep into that particular point. it is just essentially any delta contribution that you provide in to that particular it may be engineering particular this whether it may be in uh, you know the supply chain management it can be or it can be in let us say that it can be in logistics particular this or it can be in any particular field as such as long as we are making the life of somebody else better then essentially it's an innovation particular this so we need to be able to look from that particular perspective and then be able to say that what are all the various possibilities how do we essentially look into that particular because today at the end of the day it is a very very dynamic world in the sense that you know people have to be innovative as such so in fact you know whether even if you get into a job particular this there also people be able to look at what essentially the innovation that i can bring it along so that you know the customer life will be better as such so in the very early days probably would have been uh, you know uh, looking at more of uh, the time and the space particular this today it is much more than that particular this so i think you know this is a very wonderful opportunity again i mean uh, Well, a great uh, subject as such. You know, whoever has thought about it, you know, IS uh, particular people, I need to congratulate them and uh, the respectful thanks to them for providing this sort of an, uh, you know, I mean, forum to the students and the staff, where in which they will be able to come and speak of the various the rainbow of opportunities or the innovations that are available in this field as such. So I think you know, I mean, uh, with these few words, and in fact, you know, I know many of the. Uh, dignitaries who are becoming along and then will be providing their insights and thoughts on this particular field as such and i do have a great respect and i know mean some of them as such so once again sir thank you very much and uh, thanks to the whole of uh, the is department because you know, it is not possible for one person to put along this particular front and i know that you know i mean a uh, lot of professors and uh, the faculties have worked very hard Uh, to put this show as such so once again i wish uh, all, all all the best to the participants as such make use of this opportunity and grow with this particular opportunity so thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful day thank you sir. thank you sir for your influence influential message we are inspired by your thoughts it's a great great pleasure for pleasure for me to introduce our keynote speaker who are meticulous in their fields for the conference dr dinesh k anvekar professor rnsit dr dinesh h professor and hod from ncet dr nicholas professor at department of computer applications nit tiruchirappalli and dr chanappa b akki registrar at iit dharwad now it's time for the inauguration of nce iet 2021 we are glad to inform you all that we have received around 40 technical papers for the presentation across various institutes in india covering various research domains technical papers technical papers gives a brief idea about the existing research and innovations among the researchers in today's world now i request our captain of the ship hod kempraju sir to inaugurate the conference pro proceedings over to you sir
Uh, that was the inauguration of our conference proceedings. Okay, so it's now time for us to uh, come to, we have come to the end of the session. So I'm going to uh, thank you one and all for being a part of this inaugural function and gracing the occasion with your presence. On behalf of the organizing committee of NCE IET 2021, I wish you the best of luck for the upcoming presentations. I request all the participants to join their respective tracks minutes before the presentation. Over to Manjula. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker, Dr. Dinesh K. Anvekar, who is currently working as a professor in RNSIT. He has a unique over 15 years of current experience in Indian Institute of Science and was ranked 18th in the world. He was a director of R&D at Vijay Vitala Institute of Technology and director of entrepreneurship and professor of computer science at CMRIT. He has received first plateau award from IBM and KS Young Scientist Award in Karnataka. Filed six U.S. patents and 100 patents in India for his innovative work. With the great academic experience of 18 years in IISC and other institutes, he was re received the best PhD thesis at Indian Institute of Science. He is also an author of one book and 55 technical papers. He has been an excellent mentor by guiding 306 Sigma Green Belt projects in Hanwell. Also have been a great supervisor for 40 undergraduates and research students in Indian Institute of Science. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Manjula. I think I'll now share my uh, PPT. I hope this is uh, visible to all. And voice, is it clear? Uh, if it is so, sir, uh, I think have you I shared will, uh, screen, sir? assume that you're, have you it's clear, right? Voice sir, is clear and the PPT. Voice is clear, sir. Uh, PPT we can't see, sir. We can't. Okay. Let me once again share it. Share it. Share screen, share it, this one. Now it should be visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to address the audience of this conference, which is on new innovations are emerging and emerging technologies. I have chosen the topic as Confluence of Computing and Communication with Industry 4.0. Now, if you look at the current scenario, one of the latest keywords, or buzzwords, is Industry 4.0. Many of us are still not very clear about what is this Industry 4.0. What is 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and finally, what is 4.0? We need to understand that. In one of the conferences, where all the three were brought out, there were many papers, and you can see here, not many papers were there in the industry 4.0. Therefore, it is one of the 
very latest and emerging technologies and many of the participants in this conference must try to reorient the work towards the industry 4.0 and some of the latest areas that are oncoming for example deep learning machine learning all these have become very more very much more relevant in these times than as compared to 3 or 4 decades ago communications and computers computing both have developed on their own front in addition the field of micro microelectronics had made has made great strides and we have a lot of potential in each field but unless we combine them in a meaningful way the research becomes not very relevant so with that in mind let us first look into what is industry 4.0 we can see in this how the industrial revolution has progressed over a period of time and many of them have taken some of them especially some of the technologies involved in them have taken long time in the earlier revolutions in industry until about the 15th and 16th century if you see not much was happening people were all in the same age old ways of doing things not many innovations and lot of art etc was happening and in 19 15th century when the industrial revolution began people tried to see for new ways of doing things and the weaving loom and the power of steam used in steam engines and mechanization all these which started around the early or the middle 18th century and late 18th century greatly made things to happen at a different orbital level or a quantum jump was made in engineering and in technologies what was happening in small scale by people working together what was happening at a very slow pace started happening at a much faster pace but not as fast as what is happening in our current century but for those people at those times it was a great change and that we can call it as industry 1.0 as it proceeded around late 19th century many things which were not known earlier came out for example the use of electrical energy electrical motors and the concept of assembly line mass production which was started with henry ford and many others who tried to produce in large quantities so that many people can be benefited and the cost of products and systems can be brought down that constituted what is known as industry 2.0 that continue but still the progress was not anything as compared to what we have now from there for another 100 years many new things came especially catalyzed by world wars 1 and 2 and people working worldwide to develop electronic products until then no electronic products were there and electronics came with the invention of the tube and forester who invented the tube revolutionized the field of electronics wherein <clears throat> by controlling the motion of electronics and by amplifying communications over long distances was possible thanks to the works of people like tesla and even marconi and many others who made communication possible but even then there was no great 
change that was seen. And when in 1947, three inventors from the Bell Labs, they invented the transistor, the semiconductor transistor. Invention of the vacuum tube, triodes, di diodes, and all that no doubt made people to come out with functional blocks that were not possible earlier. But that was not enough for making them to be adopted by people at large because the size of the tubes were very large. They could not be miniaturized. But to the invention of transistors, many things to be miniaturized. And smaller transistors, which consumed less power, made some portable systems very easily possible. But still, miniaturization continued. Around the early 60s and 70s, the work by many people which miniaturized made computers to be made very small, electrons to be electronics to be used in smaller products and systems. Also, automation to be done because of the use of computers, electrons, and even some robotics. That can be called as a industry 3.0. Now we are moving into over the last five decades or so. Many new things have happened, and over the last two decades, the internet technology, information type technology, all this has led to a state where we are today th thinking of cyber physical systems. Earlier, there were only physical systems. Now, cyber physical systems, because many physical systems which were just mechanical systems, can be made more smarter by including computers in them. And also there was, there is the Internet of Things. The Internet has caused a great revolution in terms of how we share our information, how different sectors of industry can share and work together. All these are possible. And therefore today with all these, we have the best of all the technologies that were formed until now and the progress is phenomenal and the rate of change of program technologies rate of change of adaptation technology has also gone to a next higher level and this we call as the industry 4.0 where the fields of communication communicate and computing and controls which were separately developing over the last five decades have been now merged and they are making many things that are possible which were not even thought of or which could not be imagined in the early past of the last century and even the middle of the last century. So industry 4.0 is a subset of the fourth industrial revolution we can say. It includes concepts of smart manufacturing, smart factories, which concepts were already there adopted by Japanese. Even in the later part of the last century, 20th century, Japanese were still having many things which were there. But when compared to the global scale, many global manufacturers were still were not manufacturing in a smart way. Their factories were not smart. Now many smart factories have come where things are happening by using technologies from artificial intelligence, machine learning, things have become much more smarter. Earlier manufacturing involved, mostly manufacturing during the daytime and especially agriculture was possible in the daytime only and even manufacturing, people had to have light. Therefore, when they want to, wanted to manufacture in the night times, they had to have lights on because human beings could not see anything without lights. But now we are talking about terms like dark factories or light outs, light out manufacturing, which means that the factories need not have any more lights because the workers are manufacturing the Persons doing work, moving things from place to place and doing things 
or robots and they need not have to see by their inherent programming they are able to move without light and if they are to at all they have to move the necessary lights are provided in a different form there could be infrared light or even laser lights ultraviolet light all this could be provided then there are no workers in the factory therefore we have dark factories and these are becoming popularly used it means that the entire factory has no human beings who need to see lights only robots can operate only when necessary lights to be put on industrial internet of things also is now coming up where all the things within the industry and within the industrial setups and plants that are distributed geographically they are all connected by internet of things and because of that the communication between different machines different systems and units is possible through the internet and because of that it is not necessary for a certain machine to wait a machine producing something can know when a certain item is coming and then what are the items required and that can also be communicated to other units which can know that things can come japanese thought of the just in time manufacturing and they use different techniques for doing that but here just in time is not required because there is no necessity for people who are unsynchronized to see that things come just in time it is ensured that things are happening in synchronism and therefore there is nothing like i was there just in time the things were routed in such a way that i had to be there just in time so these are all the things that are involved in industry 4.0 as i told you many different technologies have come together and their confluence has resulted in industry 4.0 real time tracking deliveries embedded sensors all these are involved in the industry 4.0 and that requires lot of data analytics wireless communication cloud computing automation and sensors and internet of things use of artificial intelligence to schedule and plan and execute things augmented reality for people involved to be able to not necess not required to refer to manuals and books for maintenance and debugging of problems all these are possible and not only that things like 3d printing which need not have to assemble things together after the things are made but to make things together as an assembled whole they are all possible in industry 4.0 so main elements in the industry 4.0 as you can see are the mobile devices iot's detection of location of different entities different technologies involved in that advanced human machine interfaces such as the virtual reality authentication and security and fraud detection 3d printing smart sensing big data analytics and advanced algorithms multi level communication intercom interfacing augmented reality variables fog edge and cloud computing all these technologies are on their own technologies which are uh, progressed and mature but it not that they have reached the saturation level many researchers worldwide are working in them so many of you who have set another earlier technologies in which you are working and you say that you are an expert in that for example i am an expert in image processing technology i am an expert in automation i am an expert in computer compilers algorithms and computer vision all these you have to now reorient yourself and use these new terms to define yourself otherwise you will be still saying that i am still in those points 
where many researchers have long back passed and gone further ahead and they are inventing and they are researching many new things which we are not aware of this you must keep in mind because observations becoming outdated become a dinosaur in the modern times it becomes very easy because the technology is developing at a faster rate and we can see this in many people who did not reorient themselves as an example around the industry 3.0 if you see steam engines and internal combustion engines they came and they replaced horse carriages horses were used very popularly and worldwide for moving from place to place because of their speed and their capabilities and that's why we have the term horse power for you and our our machines in mechanical engineering but people involved in that carriage industry who are making the wheels and other necessary infrastructures all the things required for meeting the horse with the carriage all these some of them did not reorient themselves and they became obsolete and they were no longer required now with the coming of the internal combustion engines many of the steam powered steam engines and steam powered items like steam locomotives and steam power used in some of the industries they became also outdated and people started using induction motors and electrical systems came into picture going forward when the technology developed people some of them learned quite a lot and they were experts in tubes they could design the systems based on tubes and later people could design systems based on transistors but they also became little obsolete when the ic's came into picture and they were not able to imbibe and get and adapt and make the ic based technologies their technologies and therefore they were phased out now if you see we are in a stage where we no longer can say that i am only an electronics man we also have to adopt many computer technologies computer programming and using of computer tools because many of the things which were earlier just the domain of electronics have now become highly dependent upon computers also even for designing and applying the systems take for example nowadays arduinos and microcontrollers are available and to use this someone must have know how to even write a, at least a small program and those who are not able to do that they have become incapable of using the latest technologies in the form of microcontrollers therefore you must keep in mind and know that you have to constantly and steadily keep developing and adapting new technologies that having so told you will know you can find there are many people who are very good electronics designers but they are not able to make use of the latest chips and microcontrollers which have lots of power and design systems and use them in their projects so obsolescence obsolescence and becoming not required is a way of life and therefore we also have to adapt ourselves and go forward and go into one of these new technologies with the background of our knowledge in the earlier technologies again reiterating on the concept of smart factory in the context of industry 4.0 cyber physical systems have become relevant robotics was earlier just a requirement to make a single robot and mainly in the industrial revolution of the 20th century robots were employed in industry and they were stand alone robots and they did not have to have the capabilities of a human being
fancy idea for people to have something which will do what people were doing but now if you see the robots of today have become capable of coming up with are capable of doing things which were earlier not even heard of even for me when i joined the school of automation in the indian school of science in the later 70s 81 82 when i was doing i did my master of engineering in auto auto uh, auto school of automation which was specializing in automation and people were experts in computer the control engineering and in hardware design and some mechanical background was also required there but at that time computer swords computer engineering was only slight uh, lightly introduced in that department but today if you see it has changed itself into computer science and automation Dinesh sir, hello Dinesh sir, hello, hello, uh, and Dr. Anvekar sir, hello, ah yes sir, Not yes audible. sir, now, ah, now it's audible sir, now it's audible sir, no, no. okay thank you sir, so as I was telling when you look at that small mouse going through it may look that it is a fun activity but it is one of the wonders because the human being has developed with the confluence of various technologies wireless technology computing technology artificial intelligence machine learning and many others and using that he has made 
such a wonderful and intelligent entity in that small size <coughs> what can we speak of if you are given <coughs> many more resources some of you if you have seen the movie interstellar and gravity you will see that in that movie there is a robot and that robot is so powerful and so strong that at times it is much more intelligent than human being and it also has different levels of emotion and understanding now for us it looks like a movie fiction but in future such a thing can also happen then we will see that there will be an entity much more intelligent than human beings and it is our turn to ensure that we as human beings also progressively develop our intelligence and keep in pace with the intelligence that is developed in machines simulation and augmented reality integration at both the horizontal and vertical levels <coughs> iot already we know cyber security cloud additive manufacturing the term used there earlier manufacturing was make different parts thousands of parts whatever is required put them all together at a later stage by an assembly additive manufacturing does not make parts but it makes the whole thing by adding things at the stage of forming those parts themselves supply chain and big data analytics these are the nine wheels so you should take any of the fields that is nearer to you and then try to explore papers and orient your research in such a way that you can also contribute meaningfully six dimensions are one is the technology dimension another is the data dimension the process that are processes that are involved the organization of the <coughs> various systems and industries how can we govern all these and what kind of security is required because whenever we have a very sophisticated system security is very important however complicated the system is if a small thing fails there is a great failure you know <clears throat> reentry to the earth for the space shuttle you know when kalpana chawla and the team were there <clears throat> it was not that <clears throat> computers failed the internal electronics failed nothing failed a very small thing a brick on the outer wall had failed and that led to catastrophic failure therefore when we come to design system security is so important because anti social elements and people who are not interested to have a healthy competition can always bring systems to a stand still or even make them incapable of doing anything so security must be inbuilt and therefore that is also an important field which is to be handled design principles are important interoperability transparency of information decentralized decisions and technical assistance all these are required what do you mean by transparency of information what is interoperability what is decentralization so if you see even today <clears throat> many industries don't perform all their operations in one place even within a company its manufacturing plants will be at different say, different geographical locations and they have to collaborate and they have to interact together but with outsourcing which is the important thing because no one industry can specialize and excel in all the possible parts and components and subsystems that are required for it therefore outsourcing is required and when we outsource it if there is no transparency the outsourced entity 
will not be able to understand the impact of the thing that is outsourced and how it has to be designed therefore transparency is required but at the same time the problem is that if you make it very transparent then the competition fails one competitor will come to know about what the other person is doing and therefore the motivation for people to maintain their trade secrets and ensure that intellectual property is safeguarded becomes a problem therefore at a very broad level <coughs> industry 4.0 appears to be a very simple thing and a natural evolution but there are many more challenges that need to be tackled before it becomes a real reality the production also has to take a different turn <coughs> now if you see in the modern times everything has become almost digitalized digital digital the reason is that as compared to the analog systems the digital systems have inherent noise immunity and they are resistant to noise and also precision is very high however hard you try in analog systems temperature variations drift analog component variations all these can lead to drifts therefore if your manufacturing setup is based upon an analog component for example a potentiometer and many other analog components put together there is a chance that over a period of time there could be a drift and that would cause problems so everything now becomes a digitalized production so it has a digital ecosystem with digital services and digital documentation and all the things are defined by means of numbers and files which have all the digital involvements even in the ic technology if you see <coughs> earlier for producing an ic they had to do the layout on a large floor by using tapes and people had to be literally and really hanging from the roof and then do the drawing and that big drawing had to be captured by a camera and then they had to do the mask required for production but today if you see no one does that everything is done by using computer software and finally the file that is given to the industrial setup for example let us say you want to produce a chip microcontroller chip like arduino chip that whole chip is now contained in one digital file which has nothing but numbers and numbers and numbers that file when it is given to a manufacturing set setup he will be able to make that arduino chip and fabricate that and give it to you so this is the digital age the assembly process also as i mentioned has changed will not go deep into it then we have a need to see how the computing has gone some of you have gone into the computer science stream and come to information science information technology and so on others have gone to the electronics and communication domain and become experts in communication analog communication digital communication wireless communication networking all these have come together and even with computing and communication coming together networking as possible not only communication the analog domain but computer to computer communication that has led to internet and so on these are evolved but now therefore in this evolution <coughs> you have to see where further you are going to go so to take a quick introduction a uh, quick pass through through the technologies we can say the first computer came around 1944 when we realistic computer called eniac which used vacuum tubes and weighed 5 tons was made 1940 to 1956 around that we can call it as the first generation of computers still they used vacuum tubes and some of you don't know the vacuum tubes for their operations they require high voltages that is number 1 when i say high is not uh, thousands of volts but will be 200 300 volts something like that or even 100 volts and they require 
a filament to be heated. And that is like a heater. And they produce a lot of heat. And large amount of heat is also produced. Cooling is required. And that makes it very difficult to make them operational and maintain them. So the first generation of computers, <coughs> we can say these are all the first generation of computers. And then we go to these computers, which used many tubes and so on. And they are still at a elementary stage, but they were also useful in the world wars. <coughs> then we had a second generation of computers because with the invention of transistors, 56 to 63, core memory, transistors, all that improved, size significantly reduced. Then we have computers, the second generation, which were IBM, CDC, UNIVAC, all that, which are quite decent in terms of their size and power requirements, and very large corporations and large institutions could afford them. No one could think of having a computer in his home. So as you can see, they were very large, and mostly they used large amount of data stored in tapes, magnetic tapes. And they had to be very well maintained. No dust, nothing, air conditioned room, all this were required. Even when I joined in the Indian of Science, we didn't have personal computers. And we had to go into the computer only a few at a time with booking of slots, sit there and come out, use punch cards and then program it. They were all primitive technologies, but nowadays no one uses that. Then the third generation of computers was revolutionized because of introduction of ICs and also development of programming languages. And with these improvements, smaller and powerful processors with increased reliability and speed were possible. Like IBM 360 series, Honeywell computer series, PDP. In IAC, there was PDP 11. The computer was there. TDC computer, all these were involved. DEC, DC computer, they came. And these are all some of them. Fourth generation of computer, if you see very large scale integration, 1971 to 80s, higher level languages used, pipeline processing, networking, and all this is evolved. And in the fourth generation, we have things like DEC computer, PDP 11, which I was mentioning, and supercomputers were also possible. Then comes the fifth generation which use ultra large scale integrated circuits, <coughs> very advanced software programs, even com quantum computing is possible. And that has happened since 1980s. And since 1980s, microprocessors also have come. And you can see with microprocessors coming the early 80s and later 70s, 404, 8086 and so on, Personal computers have come and revolutionized and made computing power possible for everyone. And not only that, with the development of communication technologies, internet, and much of miniaturization, this is only up to 211, 221 if you see, now we have a powerful computer in our pockets, the smartphone which many of them may think that it's just a smartphone after all. No, it is a full-fledged computer which has capabilities of many, many large computers of the yester decades and years. So with the fifth generation computers, things like Macintosh, Amiga, all these came. IBM's computers came and Steve Jobs introduced that Mac computer and with all that, we have seen how things have gone. And now we are moving into the next stage, which is for very high speed computing, which was even unheard of for us, and which is not possible with the existing electronic devices. That is what is now being planned. And it appears that how can they do it? Whenever a certain technology comes, people who are, all, are always pessimistic and say it may not be possible. But human intelligence is such that given the sufficient time, they can achieve wonders. And some of these some are, some of them are nothing less than miracles. 
now we are having artificial intelligence which gives cognitive ability to machines creativity to machines and even perception ibm's computer all these computers have now shown ibm's deep blue computer has shown that it is one of the most powerful computer which can beat even the grand masters in chess it is only a sort of a benchmark but otherwise they can do many things in that manner now with the availability of large amount of computers and it is not possible for us to have one big computer in a building which is having so many computers the internet has made it necessary for everyone to have their own computers and the advancement of personal computers and smaller computers becoming bigger and bigger and the server technology apache technology of ibm and many others it has become very easy for us to link a large number of servers or computers together and form a very powerful computing system which cannot be seen in one place it is a distributed computer which is present in different places but it's all tied together by means of one communication channel which could be wireless or even fiber optic communications can be used so cloud computing is one where by using some of the services that we use in the internet they are also available in the cloud earlier if we want to have something to be done elsewhere we could upload a certain program and get it done by the computer and download it we could upload it to one server and get it done but now the concept is if you upload it to a cloud computer one of the computers may take the job and the whole job may be done by not by one computer it may make use of several computers in that cloud of computers and us service service much faster than what can be done now it has become possible that we can use software as a service you need not have to download into your computers even now today for my patenting work and many other works i use certain software programs which are not there on my computer but just go to that and get back and it happens as though it is downloaded into my computer infrastructure of many organizations that are used which is there physically located in one place can be shared earlier sharing an infrastructure required somebody to personally go there and put their items and do not necessary now we can use that infrastructure they are developed and then use it for example someone has let us say a robotic infrastructure someone at a different place wants to manufacture something he need not have to buy that and install that robotic infrastructure knowing about that he can give his job and the job will be done by the system and be delivered to you you are the manufacturer but the infrastructure is not yours similarly the platform te technology where different platforms are used to perform operations virtualization is another concept in one talk we did not have, we should not and we did not go so deep so i'll go a little faster revolution of desktops we already seen the internet has made it possible for us to do things which hitherto i myself thought may not be possible i being a optimistic man i was very pessimistic when they said that we could have internet at our fingertips in the 80s i was thinking no it will have problems it will not be reliable all that i was thinking but now using the internet on my mobile phone and even now we are all distributed in different places and how we are listening to the presentation and talking to each other without any problems and hitches this itself is a proof how the internet and the different technologies have made reliable things possible therefore if modern technological people who are more intelligent than me who are more intelligent than us say that we will do that in future i will not doubt them i may say that yes it is possible nothing is impossible software as a service i have spoken about open source <coughs> is becoming very 
predominant and with this many reliable and powerful systems can develop because many intelligent brains can come together and make very reliable systems and systems that are very easily available for one and all server virtualization storage virtualization now virtual storage our storage need not be in one place it can be any in many places but that acts as one storage for us when we want to access that infrastructure as a service also mentioned to you agile technologies for development of programs devop development operations and future of pure computing if you see there are many it mega trends social media mobile consumerization big data and cloud computing each of them is such so deep that one could talk for one about one hour about them that itself hyper competition is another one crowd funding business agility open innovation seed accelerator and every day we feel that they are inventing some new techniques and terminologies they are not just sitting there and inventing term terminologies as the business the technology is changing they are forced forced to invent those terms to communicate and some of the people who were in the yester years have to stop learning will think that these are all very difficult i am not able to understand all that it's all nonsense people may say earlier <coughs> some people who are not very computer savvy who are experts in their own field talked about a computer as gi go gigo they said garbage in garbage out machine they said you give to the computer garbage or garbage comes out but we know now computer is not that it is not just a number cruncher it has become such a powerful tool that it does very reliable and required things which are very sensible to us and it make things possible take for example today we didn't have some of these technologies even monitoring this vaccination just yesterday i had my second jab and now if you see i have been informed that i have been vaccinated and they have registered it and they know at any point who has been who has not been and the whole thing is possible because of this technology and how i was able to do there just by my phone i could see which is the nearest spot where i can go one how many spots are free i booked it in 10 minutes i was able to go there and get my things done this is the type of technology and we have to be very happy that we are alive to see that many of the stalwarts of computer engineering automation communications many people who made very nice contributions they are unfortunately not able to see the results of their contribution used in a very effective manner so let us be very grateful to all of them and go ahead in those footsteps disruption the many things that are disruptive technologies let me read this mark andersen's his statement six decades into computer revolution four decades since the revolution invention of micro microprocessors and two decades into the rise of the modern internet all of the technology required to transform industries through software finally works and can be widely delivered at global scale many great companies amazon ebay crayox linkedin netflix many of them are representative of what the technology confluence and communication confluence with the modern developments have made possible google for example is a very great example to say how things can happen so fast search by google itself is a wonder just give something in seconds it will give you the results whereas a very fast server in our own campuses will sometimes takes several seconds to give back the results suppose the book is there in our library or not if you do the library server may takes few seconds and say not available whereas google does it in such a fast scale how it does itself to understand is a complexity 
communications have evolved from even Morse code, which was used in the Wild West for communicating, and which was considered as one of the breakthroughs in communication technology, has gone through many other communication technologies like voice communication, radio communication, image communication, and communication, computer communications, and so on. And cellular communications, where cellular technology is used for connecting cells as they grow from place to place. And then over the internet communications, with which now you are able to very cheaply, without any requirement to pay for technologies greatly, with a very low cost of internet time, we are able to do all this possible. Email. Email was a very primitive stage when I was visiting State University of New York in 1986. And one of the persons there told, see, I'm sending one message. One line text message is sent. You see, by tomorrow, I will get a message, a reply for this. And that was a great thing for us, where we had to send, to send a message. It was very co costly because of Telegram and then all those different technologies. Or to send a message by some other means, it would take, by postal means, it would take days together. And he was saying that it can go around the trip and come the next day. But today we know internet is not the day's thing. It's a matter of seconds. If you don't get it in seconds, we are doubting whether something is wrong. Now, email has also given way to another very nice thing, which is the WhatsApp. Earlier when WhatsApp came, I myself was not very happy with it. What's it? Just send me images. Take the image and send it. Who wants to send images by clicking some images here and there? How many tourists go here and there to send images back home and all that? I was thinking. But later, when I started interacting with people, I myself found that it is essential for us to have WhatsApp. With that, we can share information much more faster, much more better way than even e emails. Nowadays, emails, people who use it as only a backup for a very large amount of information to be sent. WhatsApp is at the fingertips. We can get things and done. Social networks, all these are coming. Now quickly, we'll go to emerging technologies. We will not be able to go in great depth into emerging technologies. So we'll just take a quick peek. Victory of technology over decades has happened. And we have artificial intelligence, which has resulted in automated transportation, solving climate related problems and cyborg technologies. And we are talking about deep learning also. <coughs> Robotics have been used extensively. There is a company in Boston called as Boston Robotics. It has developed a series of different types of animals which can also move and man. And you can see the vigilities by going to the website or in YouTube you will be wonderstruck as to how these things can work. They are very agile and, agile and resistant, and they can be used in defense and other applications, not only in defense, in many, very many things that were not possible for human to, humans to do. Sophia robot, we know, you can talk to it and get things done. In Japan, they are using nursing robots, especially in these modern times when COVID is a problem. We can use nurses, which will give take care of patients. This is another thing for ordering, online ordering for groceries and stores. Some of you who have gone abroad, you'll see that we have to go to the shopping for online shopping. And then we have to go and search items, put them together, stand in a queue and so on. Finally, it takes a lot of time. This is the technology developed by Ocado, UK which has a robotics platform. In this one, you can see each one is a robot, full-fledged robot with powerful computers. <coughs> they have used in this entire shop floor, 2,000 computers, 2,000 robots are used. Each robot has wheels to go either in the X direction, Y direction. It can go at very high speeds. And when it comes to with another robot, it can, it can immediately stop, take another route, and go to whichever block that it wants. Now each of these grids, each of these blocks or slots that we call is a slot for a consumer. A consumer is given a slot. And below that, 
there are stacks of trays and at any point of time the tray which is at the topmost is the tray for a particular consumer he has let us stay order this 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 things for his grocery this many this much of one bag of rice one bag of this one one bag of parleji and all that he has or, or, ordered the whole thing is received by a super computer which is the mind of the whole thing all these though they are robots they are all controlled by one computer which runs the master artificial and intelligence machine learning program and these robots they are all moving about and there are behind this there are robots which will pack things which are required to be given to a particular customer and those robots pick up all that that bag and bring that and put into this one of those items here and this way whichever is required to put them and the whole thing will go like packet switching and packet transfer in our communication technology that packet will be in no time brought out to a delivery station where it will be taken up and delivered to the home later maybe with the development of drone which we are not currently seen in law wide spread use the drone may come with the shortest route and give us the required items on the youtube i suggest that some of you take a look of how these things happen it is a wonderful technology no human being involved big data all these have been terms cyber security blockchain autonomous car which we have been talking about tesla and others and ai ml and deep learning together are pushing the limits of robotics and machine may machine based things to their ultimate boundaries artificial intelligence any technique that enables humans uh, the machines to mimic human beings by using different rules and machine learning is a broad field within that we have subset called a machine learning that will now use statistical techniques by which it will have improved improvement of task with experience and as it ages we can say that machine is a senior machine because it has been working in this area for several years and therefore it has learned a lot and that has to use deep learning and deep learning is one which is a subset of machine learning where they use the software to train itself and finally come out with with a neural network and to understand things so these are all very wonderful things and we have to hats put our hats off and bow down to these people who are technology giants technological progress never ends let me know it will never end it will keep on happening so we can either freeze and stay where we are or we can progress but those who have to progress will definitely progress and definitely make things different so my presentation cannot end go on therefore it has to end the clock has shown me that it is almost time now so i am going to end this with a conclusion says the confluence of computing communication with industry 4.0 you are tall 4.1 4.2 4.3 may come 4.5 may industry 5.0 may come it will keep on happening there is a great opportunity for our researchers inventors all people to contribute to these technologies and also make use of those technologies we have to broaden our view and plan our future work suppose you are planning to be in the domain for our next 20 years you have to better start with these modern technologies rather than only stagnating and saturating in the old techniques that you you have been used to and pick it up for your research students for yourself you can do that and then leave from your comfort zones and take up a newer path thank you all we can have if we have time we can take up one or two questions from people well thank you sir for your impactful session on industry 4.0 your session was full of enthusiasm and valuable knowledge now it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our next keynote speaker dr dinesh chache 
Dinesh sir, over to you sir. Dinesh sir. Yes, 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 sir. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just sharing my screen. Is it visible, madam? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, so good afternoon, all. Uh, so I'm going to uh, give a small brush up. for one hour. I'm going to tell you what are the, you know, the engineering innovations in uh, happening in emerging technology, especially in computer science and IT. Field. Okay. So engineering technologies, uh, you can say it's uh, so many, you know, to, you know, uh, engineering domain but we are focusing here on uh, computer science and it related stuff so uh, uh, let me start uh, my session uh, begin with the one small quote innovation is the ability to see change as an opportunity it's not a threat okay so what is innovation so whenever there is a need whenever there is a necessity it is required to enhance it is required to enhance the features and the facility so the innovation is inevitable so this is what the steve Jobs says so one failure example i'll tell you the nokia when they wanted to innovate from symbian to the android or uh, you know the different operating system it was failure so now uh, the market as you uh, know other uh, service provider has taken up the market similarly kodak so when they were in analog uh, you know the camera system they were the pioneer they were uh, ruling the market but as soon as the digital stuff come but uh, they failed to adopt the changes and make a innovation so these failures are maybe the decision making of them so may they you know come down the you know, market so that is what the you know the summary here innovation is an opportunity it is not a threat so that is what my you know message here i am going to enlighten you with respect to the emerging technology one is on data science related and artificial intelligence 3d image processing because the image processing in many in you know you know invention and innovations has been done across the globe and now the term is comes into 3d so 3d processing is a market now not the image processing so 3d 2d is almost uh, you know done so it's a saturation state but 3d is still you uh, know uh, many innovations are still possible and the next one is augmented reality and virtual uh, reality. And next, 
5G and 6G, and the next is cyber security, cyber forensic, and blockchain technology, etc. So I'm not limiting uh, because so many technologies are there, uh, the cloud computing and all, software defined network, virtualization techniques, so many emerging technologies are there. But still, uh, I know I am focusing on these aspects due to time constraint. Okay. So let us start my, you know, the first topic on data science innovations. So what is the data science innovation here? It's a real time data processing and analytics. For example, so now the situation is there COVID. So we want to, the government is trying hard to facilitate the beds, hospital and medicine and the statistics and all. So the government needs statistics to take decisions, right? So because of the, you know, uh, every minute, every uh, you know, second, the data is feeding in the, you know, the ERP or the, in the uh, social media or in the network. So uh, the analytics on real-time data is uh, challenging. So that is what? So that is the necessity. That is the need of the hour. Necessity is the mother of invention. Any innovation, innovation, it because of the necessities. Okay. Now the real-time uh, data processing is must, and the government has to have such technique for taking uh, a statistics and you know execution of proper decision. Okay. So similarly, so many applications have been enlisted here: the weather prediction, stock market prediction, fake news detection video classification, human action recognition, medical report generation, email classification, sound classification, credit card fraud detection, sign language recognition, class of flower prediction, road traffic prediction, celebrity voice, and the stuff is detecting you know, parison disease and store sales prediction. So all these comes under the real-time data processing. But I am I have listed only few. There are plenty of things to do a real-time data processing. If at all, if the researcher who are joined at this session kindly look into this, and if you want to really do a research for the social cause, okay, this is the good domain. Data science innovations are the good domain and recommended domain, and it is a challenging. People will appreciate your effort. So if you are really targeting as some need of the our application and start doing the innovations start developing a algorithm start you know doing a real time analysis with the great tools which are innovated by you or your students because many faculty have joined here take up this challenge for your research and guide the student to do a real time cause and take up those innovation should help the society okay there are two things. Do not confuse with the you know, uh, you know research and innovation. Research is the one which you do for your PhD stuff. So there you are going to you know read so many you know the IEEE paper and transaction journals and you come up with the you know literature and you derive the object out of the literature and find out the methodology and start working the methodology and preparing some again the some report and publishing in a, you know in a journal. Uh, maybe it's Corpus Index or IEEE. So those things are the research. Those things are actually the research. And that is helpful for your PhD because all should be in documented. We are in the process of that system. We are in that system. But actually, the market need innovations. OK, so need of the hour. So Bangalore traffic. Uh, so someone has to propose the solution. So for that, live data should be captured. And data analysis should be done. And live decision should be broadcast as a signals through IoT and all. Uh, Okay, so there are so many examples I can give here. Okay, so that is the one way uh, data science can be taken up. And uh, now I am moving into the artificial intelligence and machine learning. So you might have heard a uh, Sira robot and uh, Google, uh, you know, uh, robot. Whenever you order something, it will observe your, uh, you know, uh, your text and it will take a decision. And uh, it is going to take up the, you know, the perfect decisions on a different line. And also DeepMind, Facebook, Artificial Intelligence, and Microsoft Research are the several stuff where, uh, you know, the automatically speech recognition, character recognition will take. And it is going to learn. It is automatically by the text and, uh, you know, so without feeding the data, without feeding the data. So without feeding the logic, okay, based on the experience, it's uh, on the different learning modes. You already know supervised, unsupervised, and uh, semi-supervised mode. So it's going to learn by itself and it's going to take a decision in different uh, strategies, okay? So that is what the meaning of the you know, 
So this robot and you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning is a challenge for student in, in this life. Uh, give the, for example, if they want to know about the East Point or some college, so whoever is doing, so as soon as the, you know, uh, someone say, I want to know East Point College, so the automatically uh, your chatbot uh, should come up or uh, the, some of the, you know, uh, machine learning artificial intelligence algorithm should pop up and it should assist the, uh, you know, people with respect to the admission, with respect to the different strategy. So that is how uh, we can give the project innovative idea to the student. Okay. So this is uh, with respect to the artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now come the 3D, you know, uh, 3D image processing. So what is 3D image processing here uh, for a medical application for decision making? So one of the important is uh, 3D image processing application. So not only this, but also in a satellite so where they capture the image and it process. So they are also 3D image processing. Nowadays, uh, 3D view is coming to picture for GPS and uh, you know, analysis and all global position system. Okay to see the street 3D views and all. So, so many innovations happening in the line of 3D image processing. So give up some challenge where they will capture and our student can work on some innovation of 3D GPS system where they, you know, you know three, where they convert a three, to 3D for some street in the village side or some other side. So anyhow, city side is automatically taken care by Google, but rural side, we need to work it out. Next comes the augmented reality in teaching, okay? So not only teaching, this is one example I'm giving. Augmented reality is the one which gives the real time experience. Now, because of the COVID classes are running online, all the you know, students are learning in online. Okay. So earlier there was a system of uh, chalk and board. So later we moved to the projector system, LED display system. Now it's a time of augmented reality where, you know, the every, anything and everything can be visualized as a image okay so so such innovations are there in the market only thing is we teacher has to adopt that for making the session effective okay so that is where we need to learn so many tools and uh, once we you know learn the tools adopt the things okay then we can propose some innovation in it first stage is always the research then the second stage is innovation third stage comes in the invention okay we cannot suddenly jump to the invention so first we need to study the system, okay? Well, then we need to adopt the system of technology of tools. Then we need to propose, but then we need to make, you know, the effective session or effective teaching, okay? So that is where the concept coming to picture, okay? So this is uh, with respect to the augmented reality uh, in uh, teaching. So for example, uh, if we say uh, there is a, you know, motherboard architecture and what are the different timers involved in it, and how the processing takes place inside the motherboard. Okay, instead of telling in the board chalk or instead of telling in the PPT a slide or image, so we can show it in you know augmented reality by seeing the you know, showing the motherboard and the timer is it is timer, it is a diode, it is a capacitor connectivity, IC, RAM, and all those things can be visualized in the you know on the mother motherboard. So that is what the augmented reality so that student will enlighten and they feel it is effective. Okay. So that is one way. Augmented reality can be taken in anything. It's a teaching, training, okay, and any, you know, any, any, any different types of knowledge sharing sessions. So augmented reality is the innovative two techniques coming to picture. Next comes the virtual reality. So where uh, you know the virtually we can view the things, virtually we can learn the things. This is uh, since many years it's been uh, it adopted in uh, you know, pilot training in the in the aircraft, pilot training and all. But still, uh, so this has to come into the engineering line because now the tools and uh, many open source tools are there readily available. So we faculties have to adopt such technology for teaching to the uh, student. So I am telling the need of our uh, technologies because these are all the, you know, required at this moment because of the pandemic and because of the situation. So to make things effective, so augmented reality, virtual reality are the essential things. Now come to the 5G and 6G. So these are all the, you know, the latest trend in cellular communications. So 4G has been over and 5G is slowly coming up, but uh, the, we need to work it out on the environmental effect because the parrot and birds are killing because of this 5G. So we need to slow down the radiations and uh, the impact sensitivity of the radiations uh, without affecting the birds and the so small small animals okay so this 5g uh, again um, there's a study uh, many parrots have been died 
and also now they still they are doing research and they are making the things you know possible uh, and 5g is you know it's a way to connect a different devices at a time so iot taken over iot iot got meaning because of the 5g because it's connecting all the you know the things it's a internet of things or internet of everything so you can say okay so 5g is going to speed up the communication and the technology so the problem in this area is security so security we need to work it out so more security aspect more environmental aspect more the i know the ip uh, ip configuration these type of innovations are you know these type of research are still possible in 5g and in 6g 6g is the upcoming area so people are still doing you know research and framing the 6g stuff so one can take up this challenge but one tragedy thing i tell you so when the person who wanted to do a research on 3g in the year 2011 12 3g security a thesis has been started a research has been started and he has submitted a thesis in the year 2016 about the 3g by the time 4g and 5g was there so people as didn't appreciate that so be careful while you are choosing any research topic uh, and uh, it should be it should not be absolute was it should not be saturated at the time of your thesis submission plan for four year okay which are the technology is going to come up after the four year okay so our which are the technology are you know on a scope to take over the market after the four year so that you need to plan okay uh, if you are not confident on that so take up the challenge of security which is every great security is uh, is a need of our for every time because no security can be addressed even if we address the security issue so there are the loopholes the hacker or you know the hacker will find a way to hack the system okay so always they find a remedial for every security you know the firewall or security addressing so now come to the uh, cyber security and blockchain domain so which is pretty much a need of the hour i'm going in deep with respect to this technology so far we uh, no no we understood the data science and so augmented reality virtual reality and uh, so the need of the hour 6g 5g and all so now we need to focus uh, on a cyber security and blockchain what are the uh, you know booming area what are the area that has uh, required the research and all so what uh, uh, the first point here in the data security cyber security is ransomware ransomware is the one of the stuff one of the important thing which is not at addressed okay one has to address this technology okay and one has to address this is developed by hacker this is developed by this uh, you know antivirus companies itself okay so i'll tell you the ransomware what it does it it i'll, I'll in the upcoming slides i'm going to explain that so next the data breach browser security i'll tell you the live instant of browser security where is the issue so you can work on that line and produce a good thesis excellent thesis or excellent research article okay next email fraud phishing wishing mobile sim and atm card cloning is happening social media security and so on i have just listed only the 10% of the top because of the time constraint okay so let us understand in deep one by one okay so how to tackle the ransomware okay what is ransomware so it encrypt it encrypt the you know the data files and content inside the laptop okay inside the laptop or inside the desktop it's going to encrypt and then it is demand for the money okay so here uh, the one uh, you know the solution is backing up backup we need to do patches we need to keep on install we should not look into the you know invalid attachment which is not our cup of cake whatever the email comes we suddenly out of curiosity we download and we start doing the you know opening the things we should be very careful whether it's a genuine and uh, you know or not people are running behind the lottery one and uh, some you know online uh, prize online rewards and uh, some gifts gift coupons and all so by just uh, desiring that they are going to click on email stuff and they are end up with in tragedy of ransomware okay so so common threats in ransomware it's been listed here okay it's so more than i know so 300000 computer in 150 countries it's been affected so even uh, recently a uh, most of the leading company has been affected and encrypted and they demand for the money so this is how it looks like okay 
so it is been encrypted and it is the pop up has come so bitcoin you need to pay for decrypting so whatever the data is encrypted to get the data back you must provide the bitcoin or payment for decrypting then only they will provide the decrypt key so this is a need of the our challenge most of the daily and so on daily or routinely so there is a new variety of ransomware so it's not, we cannot say it's only one type of ransomware there are plenty different ways of ransomware and they are creating and coming in the market okay so that is what the ransomware you know come into picture so uh, now challenge is we need to do some innovation on addressing such things okay how to do the innovation oh, so first we need to study this first what are the ransomware how they create the ransomware how they produce the ransomware okay so now the solution part either it can be a policy so we can broadcast the policy or we can find out the technical solution or we can make some firewalls and so you know and for settings all these things can be a solution to produce such solution we need to do a innovation and the research aspect okay so this is a cheating thread so suddenly you'll get a message stating that okay our security team you know team has been tried to contact you for activating and uh, they say your internet banking account has been a limited is you know limited so kindly click on the below link and they will ask the you know as soon the person who doesn't have the knowledge we it people have little knowledge and we won't do that look at the non it guys so maybe you know few politicians or who may be a good you know entrepreneur in the non technical side so they may definitely click on such things and they will go end up in sharing the password user name and all okay so the day, you know the confidentiality will be breached and the username password will obviously they capture and they start troubling okay that start and trying to access the actual account okay so this is how uh, the cheating thread has coming to picture and next comes the data breach so data breach is an incident it is an incident where information is stolen or taken from system okay so without the knowledge or authorization of the system okay so owner without the owner or consent they are going to you know the data will be breached and they are going to extract the data where exactly these things are happening i am going to tell you one live instance with respect to the data breach okay there is a one startup company who developed a nice innovative products are doing a real time analytics okay the employees who were there in that uh, you know uh, who worked for the developer one of the developer has taken the source code and he started a company in pune okay and the same source code and in in the in a pune company they you know launched that product without the knowledge of bangalore startup okay so this is called insider data breach he has taken up he stolen the source code though he is authorized to develop the source code he should not uh, take out and run the product you know in the other metro okay so this is the one of the data breach live instant so now how to solve that so what is the you know policy we need to do a research on policy we need to do some innovation on identifying the products with respect to the data breach okay so this is how uh, you know the coming to you know different phase and phases of data breach is research attacks okay exploited and all those things okay so and i'll tell you another live examples okay with respect to the uh, security only okay so the browser uh, weakness and security so most many of you are using a browser okay and let me you know show you one browser okay so where uh, we can easily see okay where we can easily see the passwords and username so this is a uh, my google chrome so if you click at the settings go to the settings and click on the password okay here all the password can be viewable see look at here the username password everything can be viewable because this is a security breach in the browser you go now you test your you open your uh, mobile browser and uh, you now follow the steps whatever i tell so you can easily view password can be view in the plain text format see this is a plain text format the password is visible in the browser okay so this is one of the security breach and till today till today okay now also need of the hour. now we need to address this issue who is going to address whether mozilla is going to address or google chrome is going to address or we need to propose the solution how is that okay so this is the you know the you know, issues i am highlighting okay with respect to the browser see if you visit the mozilla there is a privacy and security there we can see the password show password is a text way 
where we can see the password okay so that is the reason <coughs> as a part of solution we need to propose okay disable password save option and also we need to do innovation for example if you are visiting the public cyber cafe or if you are access your friend laptop or the desktop so our college internet so if you open the browser of the public domain and if you you know work with the facebook and if you transfer some money through online automatically if the password is saved like that so what is the security base where the hacking is not at all required because it's a vulnerability it's a weakness of the system okay sorry for the interruption then now come to the uh, solution side solution side okay so look at this path i will not tell this path will get complete password and locks and history cache of the system which you have accessed so far so this is a small uh, folder if i access i can it means i have access to complete your security profile email and banking social media everything can be fetched from this particular path so this is the existing security threat only hackers know only hackers know just to open your mobile just open your mobile and click on this path okay so open the any browser and click on the settings once you click on the settings in the mobile uh, browser okay go to the password section okay so then you can easily see the saved password okay click on the saved password there here you can see your uh, banking username and passwords directly this is the exact security breach are available okay in the security system okay so one so what is the guarantee suppose if i get your mobile for 2 minutes i can see your password so person who know all these things can be easily you know anybody may is can make anyone victim easily okay so public uh, internet uh, sharing our mobile personal gadget to friends or colleagues it's not at all advisable okay so now this is a problem so these are all the live problems are there to do a research there it is there to do uh, you know innovation okay so now what you will do so okay so what you will do so first you look at so because all our internet can be accessed all internet and all is accessed through okay so what through what we access so we we access through you know the browser we through apps so those apps and browser should be secure should make necessary settings okay should look at what the settings it is so what are the issues for example before using a facebook look at the settings make your image safeguard okay if you protect your image okay so nobody can download your image and uh, morph it so there is a image forgery is going on more than 700 girl image has been put morphed and put it in a pornographical okay so we should know the negative side of the social media negative side of the internet before using we should work on that then we should go to the so this is the need of the hour this is the need of the hour so this is the you know we need innovations on that line so how to protect how automatically safeguard the image how to protect ourselves from the image for, for, you know forgery how to protect uh, you know ourselves from the social media you know in insecurity so all these things are the need of the hour so that is what the you know picture come into picture now look at this email part okay the name is uh, indian only but the email id is different okay so anybody can create a email id from dinesha name so okay just go to the google and type name is dinesha and the email id is can be anything 1 2 3 uh, no uh, din 1 2 3 or something like that okay so anybody can create a email id anybody can rename and if they are asking money through email and you know, telling that there is a serious issue okay this is the email frauds are happening at present okay what is the solution what is the solution whether even google itself they are trying to do so many things but uh, we need to be being a researcher we need to work on this line to protect or uh, to provide some solution on these lines email frauds okay so this is the one thing then come to the phishing what is phishing phishing is you know the creating a website similar to the you know the uh, original website and uh, attacking the username and password that is the phishing stuff okay so this is called the phishing stuff and uh, so we need solution for it okay look at here 
So this is a looks like SBI net banking. So one example for phishing is look like uh, State Bank of India. You know the you know State Bank of India website, but this is a phishing website. This is a phishing website. So look at the URL here, sb1online.com. It is not sbionline.com. Okay, and look at the back side. There is no HTTPS. Okay, there is no you know State Bank of India a signature in the back side. Okay, so then uh, we can call it as a phishing. So this is the you know the fake website try developed for attracting the username and password of the person. So here the attacker will capture the username and password, and in the parallelly in the back side he will be trying in the original SBI website. So this is how the phishing attacks take place. Okay, so and phishing is voice call, voice call. So similar to SBI, you know, account agency, he will call and ask for the OTP. Sir, we are calling from SBI. You started doing the net banking. Give me the OTP. So uh, we simply blindly believe and we will share the OTP. So he will enter there and he will transfer the money. Okay. So phishing and wishing are the two important frauds which are ongoing and need innovation. Need solutions, okay. Farming means it's a developing a website, fake website, you know, uh, to attract the system, okay. So that is uh, farming, and this is fishing and wishing. Hope you understand the terminology and uh, here uh, the live example of SBI websites, okay. We should be very, uh, you know, careful, and it is a need of the hour because all are in home due to pandemic, people are exploring virtual world. You know, hackers are, are connecting to the people who are enjoying the social media and uh, to trouble. Okay. So now comes social media security, the very important uh, stuff Facebook, email, and WhatsApp. So, how to provide the security for these social medias? Okay. So, this is the again need of our. Okay. So, you might have uh, seen so far that uh, people are sending a message in chat box for asking money like this look at this so this is a facebook uh, people are finding some dignitaries okay dignitaries and uh, they will simply create a fake profile of viewers and ask the money from your family members or uh, whoever is close to you so so look at here this is yesterday i got so i need one help okay what i what help you want so i asked so they transfer because he's a famous professor he's a professor and uh, Again, I informed them in this uh, panel, sir, cyber frauds created a fake profile in your name and asking money. I have just uh, informed them. And even on mobile, they are, uh, you know, created a WhatsApp uh, with the same profile pic and asking the money. Okay. So because here I shared my mobile number. So, so then once I shared, they created a WhatsApp uh, with that mobile, you know, you know, their own mobile number. But the profile pic is the original. Okay. So this is the you know the ongoing uh, fraud in social media. Okay, asking a money, asking a money is a uh, one of the social media crime. Okay, and so this is was reported in Assam a few days, a few years before. They cloned mobile SIM, ATM card. They cloned. So this person, okay, he is a you know Tanzanian student. Okay, he is a per student who has created a fake you know uh, the you know the atm card and mobile sim and he has taken a money okay so this uh, this was captured later but look at the technology he has used so look at his intelligence in creating a mobile sim and atm card and look at his intelligence and innovations in doing all these things whether we are really innovative whether we are really, really intelligent to address such cases to address such cases Another major issue is the cyber sex. Okay, so people are creating a account and they are, uh, you know, asking to come for video calls. As soon as they come to video call, they will see their face and uh, they will show the, you know, the pornographical video. As soon as they see that pornographical video, they will capture that face and they will demand for money. So we will put you to the YouTube. We will put you to the Facebook. You are watching pornography. So now give me money, otherwise I'll post this video to the uh, internet. So that is uh, you know, another threat uh, is going on in the uh, Facebook okay, or in the Instagram. One has to be very careful. One has to be very careful in uh, using Facebook and social media 
so there is always the negative side there is always the negative side of anything okay so now the solution is network security network security is the solution so network security is the solution and with that we can able to okay solve we can able to solve uh, so many thing and we need to do research on this line so we need to do research on this line okay so security guard unauthorized access website blocker controlling internet usage okay so look at this image it's a funny animation so the virus is coming but our firewall is killing and it's not letting this virus to enter into the pc okay so this is one you know stuff that is available and even the firewall and all is there and it is going to help with respect to the different uh, you know the protecting a different signature or uh, protecting a genuine signature and avoiding the unwanted signature and all those things okay this is uh, with respect to the network security this is with respect to the network security okay so firewall is one thing and uh, you know utm unified threat modeling is another thing okay one has to work on those line to improvise the system to improvise the system and uh, to work on the you know latest security breach so the innovation our innovation it could be research or innovation products idea projects all should be in this directions need of the our directions okay so just uh, finding it, uh, reading 10 20 research paper making a tabular column and uh, uh, publishing and finding some solution may not be worth at this junction maybe it is for your phd it is good but the need of if you really want to help the society with the technology solution and we need to work on this line so our student engineering uh, fraternity engineering faculty has to take up this challenge and start doing one by one i am sure now if not today after 6 months or after one year or after year two year down the line you will get a success in identifying addressing the solution so that you will become you know the recognized in the society okay i have already designed five different products on that line and i am providing the internship also to the student free of cost and we are giving a stipend also in this regard okay irrespective of the college we are providing the internship and support by you know my own cyber sena company so that is a, a sena developed to address the cyber issues okay so now comes the <clears throat> mobile security mobile apps so look at this so so many you know, mobile firewalls are there we need to so, you know first uh, the problem statement i'll tell you what is the problem statement a student children are uh, you know more addicted to the mobile so we don't know because uh, this advertisement many thing will pop up in the browser without our knowledge okay so it may be marketing it may be you know illegal website it may be invalid website it will automatically pop up as soon as we click that as soon as we click that particular thing it will take us to the in invalid so children are not aware of such things okay so how to protect our children how to protect our children okay from accessing invalid or illegal website so this is the solution mobile firewall is the solution install the mobile firewall in your uh, no, mobile before providing that mobile to the children so that so that uh, children will not enter into the children will not enter into the uh, so this stuff okay so this is how the uh, things should be done okay so uh, mobile firewall is another thing where we can give this project to our student so they can design a app in such a way that anything start from you know the pornographical keys or anything which start from some keywords of illegality should be blocked automatically so that uh, apps uh, projects can be given to student and we can do innovation on that line so we faculty has to develop the algorithm and develop the steps and develop the methodology and we need to hand over to the student for their development okay so this is hard the our uh, you know responsibility next comes the my current innovation what are the innovations i am doing are uh, right now so right now cloud forensic uh, techniques i am uh, you know doing a, a innovation so what is the cloud forensic technique so what is there in cloud so software as a service platform as a service infrastructure as a service storage as a service and these are all the major services in the cloud so for example in the g drive in the g drive because that is a, a g drive is a storage as a service correct so if any data is deleted by hacker 
how to identify that how to recover the deleted data okay that is the challenge comes under the cloud so cloud storage as a service okay uh, so that storage recovery can be done in the two one in the by means of cyber forensic okay so there is a tool called nks2 okay we need to explore that nks2 for you know recovering the data from the cloud or from the digital devices so there is a concept called a digital forensic what is a digital forensic for example if the data in the hard disk is deleted uh, data in the laptop is deleted how to recover it back using forensic technology we can recover the deleted data back okay similarly when it come to the cloud how to recover the data back so what is the technique we have so nks is the tool which from which we can recover it okay so we but the uh, problem with the nks tool is it's a paid and it need it's a 10 lakhs or no license we need to pay and it is from a uh, us you know so cyber authority has developed that okay us intelligence so why don't we develop such things so so why don't we do innovation in such things we indians okay and we you know startups so many startups are going okay so why can't they work on that line so my one of my student is working on cloud forensic techniques he has developed more than three techniques for recovering for identifying the security breach which are in cloud okay so it may be g drive or it may be any microsoft you no know, try so we have created a situation in a scenario in such a way that gmail data will be hacked by one of the unauthorized person and as soon as the delete it will be informed by means of multi stream locks techniques and it is going to be recovered uh, by using you know some recovery techniques so that is the one in innovations are under you know our line and next one is blockchain in university application so what is blockchain you all know it is using hashing techniques uh, to and there will be no duplication of transaction for example in university uh, even in uh, one of the reputed university mars card has been hacked and uh, the answers so answer script has been downloaded without uh, the authentication so so such things if the marks is edited for example i have so one student is having only a second class or failed score so can't he you know he can be you know hacked the database of the university and edit the system edit the marks and apply for the marks card okay so these things are still possible in the cyber world so it's been reported also i don't want to name the paper and you know the university here using blockchain we can easily address that issue because blockchain will never support the duplications any duplication in the ledger is automatically addressed and the once the block is created it cannot be destroyable okay so that is the one uh, techniques are there in the blockchain in university application next come to the dark net and deep web investigation what is the dark net so dark net is the one which is illegal you know the intranet illegal internet can be say and uh, deep web is one which is illegal you know uh, websites which will provide a data you know unauthenticatedly for example tar tar is a browser by using which we can download movies we can download books okay we can download any materials okay we, without paying a money for a movie you know or a producer or director we can enjoy the movie in the tar so who is uploading in tar who is uh, you know uh, running that the data center who is maintaining that internet we are not aware we are not aware so that is one of the live challenge that is there in the dark net and deep web one has to do investigation on that line one has to do investigation on that line for identifying such illegal intranet okay because internet whatever you are seeing illegally that is only 20% rest 80% is of illegal stuff illegal transaction bitcoin transactions and you know all the things are there they have their specialized app they have their specialized ip address and uh, you know the they are mapping and they are enjoying you now and they are doing a different variety of illegal things we cannot report that but now the challenge for cbi challenge for the crime department is identifying such things okay that is the challenge for that we have a darknet and deep web investigation 
so this is the current innovation so one of that are my current innovation next comes the browser and app security so what is the browser and what is the, what are the apps you know i already show you the passwords are visible in the browsers okay so if any expert knows that it is automatically captured it is automatically captured okay so that is one of the challenge so how to protect that because we do have cryptography we have encryption technique we have decryption technique why the password is saving in plain text format only in the browser okay that is the current challenge current question i am directly asking to the google person okay is it not a security breach okay all you can see the password in internet explorer mozilla or in uh, google chrome also anything so you can be easily see around okay so that is the one challenge if you want to look at the you know the mozilla i'll show you how to see uh, you know the mozilla browsers okay uh, mozilla uh, uh, passwords in the mozilla browser so i am just opening the mozilla uh, browser now to demonstrate you how to see the passwords which are saved in a plain text format so this is another security breach and need of the hour okay so set settings i am visiting okay look at this privacy and security click on there okay and come down come down and click on the saved logins look at here so look at this settings so all the login passwords are saving auto filling all this by default it is enabled okay if you click on the saved logins so you can see the uh, you know the url that we are accessing okay so many things are there my personal email id my company details and my bank accounts okay and uh, my facebook social media details everything is there and password can be easily viewable so look at here if you click on this particular i the password is visible so this is the visible password is visible so this is the security breach security issues with respect to the browser so now the question is how to produce this security breach how to produce in before the you know for the phd point of view so you identify the white paper of this particular company so it may be mozilla or google chrome or anything identify the white paper white paper is nothing but a research paper of that particular uh, you know organization they release the product before releasing the product they release the you know the white paper look at that and uh, you know take a reference of that and present before the person present before the community and university okay so that so it can be easily identifiable it is easily identifiable and this innovation is the need of the hour okay so this is the live i am showing you now you check at your desktop or the laptop or in the mobile okay these are the security issues so we need we can produce one great paper in that okay by just addressing and referring different uh, white papers and article giving uh, citations and uh, making a problem statement uh, you know or boost problem statement then the solution proposed solution what solution you are proposing that okay so all these things can be you know one good uh, research article okay next comes the big data security so big data security is i am so this is one of my research uh, is undergoing by one of my student we are the student so big data is a you know the collection of huge volume and variety and versatility data so how to protect the the data so what are the different thing because it is been collecting from the different sources okay how to protect that big data that is a challenge so for that the what are the security is there i you know security solution can be proposed to maintain the volume to maintain the velocity to maintain the variety and all those things of the big data okay so that is the challenge next comes the insider data theft forums investigation i have already told the software developer has stolen the software and is uh, so you know created a new company in the different metro and he sold out his product and you know, on the in a different uh, channel so it has been you know uh, identified later identified and we use the forensic technique so what was the forensic technique we use is os forensic so that is the technique with that we were able to see is past one year browser uh, logs we were able to see is past one year email transaction and the uh, you know system operation and the password the files which is created the files which are deleted the data uh, files which have transferred through email and uh, all the logs we have captured and we produced before the police uh, the for, and before for the 
prosecution and for the uh, taking a necessary action okay so this is how the insider data theft forensic investigation coming to picture okay so like this so many you know the topics are there to do innovations there are the live problems we need to understand the live problems and we need to create awareness so this was the one instant i'll tell you so in the police uh, you know the cyber crime official have asked me to enlighten you know and you know so give awareness on otp so there was a otp fraud one of the you know the person has uh, booked a pizza for 600 rupees the otp uh, whatever he got so and the one call has come to see the otp okay earlier it was for 600 rupees later it you know connected for 60000 rupees has been deducted from his account okay this is a otp fraud when i give a awareness on such people they are you know felicitated uh, so knowledge sharing is always the need of the hour okay so with this uh, i can conclude my session now another 5 minutes i am reserving for qa session if anything is there you can feel free to post the questions in the chat box okay and my con contact details here my number feel free to message me call me anytime i know so many issues are going to come up in the cyber uh, world because it's all the virtual it's all the you know the online now so we have to find out the solution okay for protecting ourselves recently one of the gmail invention i'll show you one of the gmail invention has taken place okay and uh, what is that invention is so for example if you want to send email look at here so if you want to send email there is a option called timer so if you if you turn on this timer your email will be uh, sustained for only one day after that automatically email will expire so these things can be used whenever you are sending a confidential data for one day for one week or something like that because whenever so such things are pretty much important in the cyber world and we need to protect our uh, you know documents hard earned documents uh, for example if you are sending our thesis or the paper for reviewing from so we can set the timer only two days it should be there with the other person as soon as he reviews he can revert back okay this is the another stuff okay so this is the confidentiality they started in gmail understanding the need of the hour okay like this so many innovations are coming up so uh, with this i can i you know tell you and i can conclude any doubts you feel free to ask Uh, any doubts with respect to the things another 5 minutes are there to clarify your doubts okay so and uh, yeah so this uh, this one last image so whatever the image i posted here this was uh, you know announced in the tv9 because of the cryptocurrency cryptocurrency bitcoin bitcoin is the one of the ongoing frauds we can't differentiate which is the genuine bitcoin who are who are the genuine bitcoin provider how to purchase the bitcoin people are uh, who purchased the bitcoin for 2000 rupees or 50000 now it is a, it's more than in a, a 10 lakhs rupees they are earning but the bitcoin cannot be used for the public transactions like purchasing the property purchasing the car purchasing any kind of the devices okay so bitcoin uh, because it's a international currency in india it is not at regularized as rbi may be approved but so many thing has to be regularized okay because just uh, in a, when you are purchasing property and going for a sale deed you can't mention to bitcoin i paid for you know i given to the person okay so that is a questionable and that policy is yet to amended in the thing so only bitcoin to bitcoin transactions are allowed okay so that was the you know session was conducted given in a tv9 okay so all these things are the need of the our solution okay cyber crime cyber uh, law so who are is the law people the cyber law has to be reframed because still we are using it act you know it act to, to 2010 okay so that need uh, amendment and so many policies evidential uh, digital proofs can be you know streamlined with respect to this okay so this is what the you know the important so with this i can conclude my session any doubts feel free to put it in chat box i am just stop sharing my presentation and i am coming back to the session sir there is a question sir uh, yeah madam uh, it's uh, popped on your screen sir can you see that yeah madam yeah yeah, yeah. yes 
what are the some of the critical parameter for detecting d d ddos attack okay distributed denial of services attacks it's a good question so critical parameters okay so you need to uh, for example um, traffic first part is the first parameter is the traffic analysis okay so for a traffic analysis for particular server so when the virus or when the hacker is created a thousands or millions of requests to one particular uh, server okay the traffic will increase and the server will not answer to the genuine question genuine request so the service is hampered okay that is called a denial of service so then the denial of service message is coming to picture pop up in the browser so to avoid that to you know the, to detect that we need to first identify the server connection okay so any point of time if any server is getting more than thousands or uh, you know request it has to automatically abort okay so one one client uh, max three request not more than that so traffic packets which are coming up so maybe through firewall or maybe through its own a security technique it has to control the incoming packets so that is one uh, you know the solution we can propose and the critical parameter to be identified is the client ip one thing second number of requests from the client ip third the you know traffic that is creating third point like that so we have to suppose sometime what happen it use virtual machine to create the traffic so vms so as to be addressed so vms as to be identified so that is the best these are all the major parameters under which you can define any number of parameter uh, to get the solution so thanks for asking a question hope i answered your question yes any other thank questions? you sir uh, thank you sir thank you thank you Mm. So, over to Manjula, madam. Thank you so much, sir. Thank yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Over to you, madam. Yes, thank you, sir, for sharing. Thank you, sir, for sharing your knowledge among us on emerging technologies and innovations. Now, thank I request you. the participants to join the respective tracks with the Google Meet link um, and check your mail ID for more information. i wish all the best to all the participants